Futures technology and science news straight from the blog, straight from the best. Right, okay, now in the month of August, this is actually what I've been seeing. So I'm gonna take you through the fanaticalfuturist.com website's blog. Uh, this is it here, look at that, looking good, I have to say. Um, I've seen loads of different breakthroughs by see this month, so let's get through them. So, uh, the first one is this. Now, if we actually have a look at this, we're kind of going backwards in order. Um, if we have a look at this one, this is OpenAI's new project Strawberry. Now, on the one hand, the headline grabbing news is that it is QSTAR, which is a human level reasoning artificial intelligence platform, just kind of reimagined, but there's more than that. Now, with Project Strawberry, OpenAI is not only trying to create an artificial intelligence that rivals humans in reasoning abilities and everything else, but the most interesting thing for me is that this is a semi to fully autonomous artificial intelligence that is able to create its own synthetic training data to bootstrap and boost its own intelligence. Nothing to see here, folks. Right, now, uh, we've got this one here. OpenAI is testing their AI's powers of persuasion. So a little bit of an a OpenAI gig already. Uh, now, I've been talking over the past, I mean, many years, but see about our ability to trust AI. Now, this is kind of split into two parts. On the one hand, we know that AI just bullshits, it hallucinates, it makes stuff up. This is more than that. This is about specifically developing artificial intelligences which are purposefully designed to try to get you to trust them. Now, there's a couple of ways that they can actually do this, especially multimodal AIs. Now, for example, if an AI is, for example, talking to me or trying to convince me of something using text, then that's one thing. However, they could actually be using things like the camera. They could be using my voice. They could figure out that I don't trust them simply by my posture because when I dip, my diaphragm compresses and that changes basically how I sound, you know, all these kinds of different things. So OpenAI is developing AIs that are trying to get you to trust them. I mean, scammers might like that, mind they? Yeah, just saying. Um, now, uh, law enforcement, yeah, when well, we actually have a look at what law enforcement's up to, law enforcement are actually really worried, I see that the use of tokens to access different parts of the metaverse means that they simply won't be allowed in by the criminals to go and investigate areas of what we are now calling the dark verse. So why would criminals actually give law enforcement the keys to their kingdom, aka Web3 tokens, to go and snoop on them, pry on them, and uh, infiltrate by seeing all the different dark verses that they're creating? The answer is, they wouldn't. Um, now, let's have a look. Uh, this one, now I've been talking about the future of food for a very, very long time. I've got a great video on that, even if I don't say, say, say so myself, I see on my fanatical futurist web, ch YouTube channel, easy for me to say, where this video will end up being. Now, we know that we can take a cell from an animal, put it into a bioreactor and create chicken nuggets and fillet steaks and all that kind of stuff. But for years, I've been saying that we can actually make food from air and we can. So air contains hydrocarbons and all kinds of different things. And using NASA like Mars technology, we're able to extract these hydrocarbons from air, turn them into fats and all that kind of stuff, which we can actually make butter and soya with and all kinds of other proteins and bits and bobs. So could we literally feed the entire planet using proteins and food and food ingredients made from air? Yes, we can, increasingly. Um, now we've also got this one, Europe, uh, the Germans basically have been experimenting with 3D printing buildings and they've just made a huge artificial intelligence data center. However, the real news in this one is not that they 3D printed the building. We've seen a lot of 3D printed buildings in the past. They 3D printed Europe's largest 3D printed building in 140 hours. That's quite quick to build a data center. Um, we've also got CrowdStrike. Now, on the one hand, CrowdStrike, 
I pushed a bad firmware update. It bricked over eight and a half million computers. It's estimated that it caused over five and a half billion dollars worth of damage. The lawyers are salivating and licking their lips already basically at the class action lawsuits that are headed CrowdStrike's way. However, if you actually read this article, you'll also see my take on the next bad thing that happens. Uh, AI agents that go wrong. So check out that uh, post and you'll see all sorts of different things. Right, now what else have we got? Um, India, I've actually been singing India over the past year starting to wake up from a technology perspective. It used to be the case that, you know, a, l a lot of the press in America was very, very busy talking about the latest technology breakthroughs and science breakthroughs and innovations and so on and so forth. Europe, not so great. China, great, but China's going dark. That's a different topic for another, for another day. Um, but India has increasingly been getting a little bit noisier when it actually comes to promoting what they're actually doing. So India now starts is now looking like it's starting to get some traction going when it comes to trying to, I say dominate the future, but at least play a role in the future. So good on India. Um, artificial atoms. So I've been tracking artificial atoms as an emerging technology really for about four years now. Uh, so this is things like atomic manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. But actually we're now using artificial atoms to help us create even more secure quantum computers. That's it. So we have artificial molecules, we've got artificial DNA and all kinds of weird things. Uh, but this particular news item is all about artificial atoms, which ultimately changes the future of manufacturing and everything else. Again, different topic for a different day. Um, now we've also got the world's first AI physiotherapy run clinic in the UK, no less. Now when we actually have a look at basically what we're actually doing in the United Kingdom, over a thousand NHS workers decided that they wanted to try to use an artificial intelligence called Flock. Now, F-L-O-K. Now, Flock has been trained on huge amounts of physiotherapy data, and actually 92% of the NHS workers who used it said it was better than the real physiotherapists they'd been to. Um, in addition to that, if Flock determined that you actually needed a physiotherapist appointment, it booked it on the spot. So this is an interesting technology because now Flock has been put in charge of an entire physiotherapy unit in the UK, and we're starting to see waiting times already fall. So good use of technology there. Whether that will actually head over to America, basically where, let's face it, time is money, quite literally, time in front of your GP is money for the healthcare organizations and everything else. Well, we'll have to wait and see. Now, uh, what else have we got? So the Olympics have now ended, um, but famous Swiss trainer manufacturer on, um, in a trend basically that I've seen really emerging over the past five years, developed some of the world's first spray on sneakers. Very, very light. Yeah, a lot of Olympians like them. I think we saw a couple of medals fall and everything else, but yes, these are literally spray-on sneakers. And they're sprayed on by a robot, no less. That's it, so very futuristic there. Now, talking about futuristic, we have Bridgewater Associates. Um, they're a global asset manager. They have about $105 billion worth of assets under management, or AUM, as the industry likes to call it. Now, what's special here is about five years ago, I saw Bridgewater should we say, come out and say that they wanted to automate the entire business. So this is Ray Dalio. Now, what Ray Dalio wanted to create, it seemed at the time, basically was a Ray Dalio brain, basically within Bridgewater Associates, that automated over 1,300 staff. Uh, Bridgewater actually hired a lot of the members from IBM Watson, uh, IBM Watson's group. Um, and that project kind of went quiet really for about two to three years. However, now Bridgewater have put an artificial intelligence in control of a $2 billion fund. So literally AI is literally making its own money. Um, then we've also got OpenAI's mini GPT-4.0 model. Now again, when we have a look at the mainstream media, no one really talked about this. You have to kind of dig around to find this story. 
But it's actually, I think, very important for really two reasons. Now, when we think of OpenAI, we typically think of OpenAI, the company that has been creating multi-trillion parameter foundational large language models, monster AIs. However, those monster AIs also cost a lot to run. Now, in addition to that, most of the organizations that will be using a monster foundational model basically will actually be very, very large enterprise organizations, which then means that OpenAI simply has very little ways or has very few ways to really try to cement itself as the AI of choice for small and medium enterprise businesses that on the one hand prioritize cost, uh, that might have some niche applications, you know, don't necessarily care about these big generic models, but we want some more niche uh, applications and niche specific use cases. Now, with GPT-40 Mini, uh, on the one hand, the cost per transaction has now fallen by over 60%. So that means Outman can go after the big enterprises, but also go after the smaller workloads and the smaller businesses. Um, now, this is where I think Altman is probably leaning on his experience running Y Combinator because he's now entering two markets, enterprise, small business. But then in addition to that, the second thing, the, the second reason why this is actually uh, important, and I'm losing my words because it's been one of those mornings, uh, is this, these small models ultimately might very well end up as distributed edge artificial intelligence models which might run on devices. And we've heard that OpenAI are developing their own devices. So that's it from me. That is, I don't know, whatever that was. That was sort of nine news stories basically from this month. I will be back later because you are simply unlucky like that. If you like this, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, share it, talk about it. What did you like? What don't you like? What would you like to see more of? What would you like to dive into more? That's it. So if you've got any particular topics that I've talked about here that you'd like to understand a little bit more about, then simply put it in the comments and I'll do one of my little video shorts for you. There you go. Anyway, take care guys. All the best. See you in the future. Bye-bye.